all right welcome back guys now in this one we're going to build this simple landing page and that's not the important part of the project the important part of the project is we're going to introduce a light and dark mode toggler into the project so if i click on this toggle here so initially when you load the page it loads in light mode right so if i click on this toggle here then it switches to dark mode and as you can see everything just changed right if i click on it again it switches back to light mode now the interesting thing is that when you refresh the page right the like light mode or dark mode whichever you switch to stays permanent so let me switch to dark mode and refresh the page and as you can see it's still in dark mode so that is because um we integrated this project with local storage so um whatever theme that the user sets is saved in the user's browser so it doesn't matter if they refresh the page or they even close the page and come back another time they are still going to have this uh on the theme on their page so that's what we're going to be able to build in this project all right thank you so much and i'll see you in the next video now if you like content around web development then make sure to subscribe to the channel to support the channel please like and comment on this video and make sure to check out my web development courses for which i'll leave a link in the description to my website xenotrustacademy.com thank you so much and let's get started all right welcome back guys now we have created a basic project i call it dark mode toggle and there's just some modifications i did in the project and um, i created three components the footer the header component the footer component and a hero component and of course you know i really don't like to put anything inside my component so it's just a template so for the footer now we just have the basic react template and we have the text footer the same applies to both the header and the hero section so we just have the basic template and the text inside it so great so i'll close that up and we are going to start from the app.js because within the app.js we are like us to um, reference the components we've created so here i'll reference my header component close that and then i'll just duplicate it here i'll reference my hero component and lastly my footer component so footer like so now let's see if we can auto import everything so control tab and wow so for some reason this thing doesn't auto import sometimes oh this should be hero then this one footer escape let me try to auto import it again because i don't want to do it manually okay so since i'm not able to auto import it well i don't want to spend time you know writing out so i'll just paste the imports so if i close that you just see that we're importing the footer header and hero from the components folder the folder where they belong and then the component name that's basically what we just did so i'll save that so that i can get rid of this error and yeah so basically we just have header hero and footer text now we are going to start from the top which is the header and if for any reason you don't want to you know see how you know we come about designing the page then you can just grab the um markup attached to this video i'll just leave the markup so you can just grab that and head over to the logic part of this project so you can just add the logic and move on okay but for those that are interested in you know building the page with me this very page with me then let's go ahead and you know build it so we'll start from the header i will come here to oh ideally i should start from my index css because now we are working with color schemes for light and dark mode so we need to arrange that in the index css so basically let me open my header first since i'm already here open my index css then lastly i would open my in uh, sorry my index css lastly great so in the index css right what we want we don't need all of this color because if you look at this page you see that there are just a couple of color schemes so i'm just going to get rid of the colors we don't need so dark blue light blue i'll get rid of it because i want a neat page i'll use the white and dark color so let's drag this upwards then gray border all of the, we don't need this so i'll just get rid of this so just be patient to see what we need and what we don't need 
so i'm also going to get rid of this last one so by and large we are using just these three colors so permit me to just group them together so one two so yeah so we're using just these three colors now what am i going to do what i would like to do is i would like to create another color so remember we're starting in light mode this is light mode so i'm going to create another uh, color variable so i'll say dash dash and i'll call this one background sorry background and let's set that to be equal to now i will like this bug oh sorry this what am i spelling here man so background i would like the background what's the background here we have the background as this light color and basically i didn't even use white i use e e e so let me change this to e e e because i don't want it to be too bright you know in my eyes and all of that but you still get the logic all right so initially my background which is what you see here now where my mouse is is this white color so i'm going to set it to we're going to use var because now we want to target another color so i'll say var and open my parenthesis and then i'm going to target the color white so this one so initially when the page loads my background will be the white color because that's where i'm starting i'm starting in light mode now i'll duplicate this and i'll now create another variable i'll call that foreground foreground really okay now foreground just simply means like the color of the things that are on the background so like the text and this text you see here and of course you see here that it's dark so i'm going to now reference my color dark okay this is the color scheme we're going to use for our page when it loads so i'm not even going to bother saying light color scheme no this is the original color scheme now we're going to now flip it when we create a dark mode and you know what i'm going to do let me just um okay i'll just create a comment here i'll say dark mode colors or color scheme l o r like that so below this um color scheme we have here we're going to create a dark mode color scheme but i would even like us to come back to that or maybe we should just do it now so um i would do like this and i will say i'll create like this object syntax here and i'll say data don't worry we'll come back to this and explain what this is data hyphen theme okay i'll set it to be equal to dark so dark and then i'll close that then i'll go ahead and open it okay now at this point i will now go ahead and copy all the colors we have here in fact i can even copy everything we have here okay but it's just the colors i'm interested in but let's just copy everything including the font family and paste that in now i will now change this background i'll flip it so the background now will be color dark because we're in dark mode then the foreground will be color light these are the only two things we are changing in this um, dark color scheme okay so this is like the initial setup for the project and because i really want to be able to break this project down into you know small videos i'm going to save this file and then in the next video we're going to start building the header section see you there all right welcome back guys so now we're going to start uh, by building the header section so first off let me close my index css which i am currently do not need um then in my app js this div that wraps these three components i'm going to give it a class of main so let me set the class name here to uh, class name to main then i'll just quickly style that main in my i think i have an app s okay so i have an app css file so dot main and then basically i'll just set the max width to 100 percent 100 percent and i'll set the overflow to hidden 
overflow and I'll set that to hidden and that's it for this um, section here oh, okay so it looks like there's something wrong with my oh okay so I didn't put <laughs> come on I didn't put I didn't close the first one all right so let me go ahead and close this and I'll come to my header JS which is like the first section or the first component we're going to work on so now for the header js this is what we want to achieve one two three in the header section so let's start by changing this guy to a header so header and i'll tap that i'll tap that and then within the header we are going to have um a container so let me just do container and I'll tap that as well open up let me close this guy here so that we have some space okay so inside this uh, what's it called this container we're going to have three um, you know areas so here we're going to have a logo div so I'll say dot logo and then let's just open that up like so then below that i'm going to have a nav so nav section tab that and below that we're just going to have another div that will hold the um this toggle switch here okay so now let's start with the logo section so for the logo i'm just going to add an image so img i'll tab that now i don't have the image i need this logo image i need so what i gotta do is inside this source folder from the original project i will drag my assets folder so the asset folder contains the logo and the phone image so i'll just drag it and drop it inside the source folder and yeah so now we have what we need the logo and the phone great by the way anything i'm using here in the in, in the demo video you have access to download all the assets and files we need okay so if i don't even say that in the first video just know that the first video contains everything you need for you know building the project okay great so now from this asset we're going to import the logo and the okay just the logo for now so here i would say import and logo logo from so how are we going to get this now so dot dots to get out of the header folder then dot dots to get out of the uh, components folder then we're in the asset so we need to be in the assets and then logo.png logo.png great now in this image area here i can then reference the logo which i just imported and for this one maybe i'll just say logo great so we're done with this um first area here so let me close this guy up so now in the nav basically i'll just have an unordered list and the unordered list is going to contain list items that will contain a tags so a and then i'll tap that now this a tag basically for the first one is going to say home and let's make it a hash so dead link then i'll duplicate this list item one more time and this one is going to say about a b O U T. great so we are done with the second section here or the second area here which is the nav area so the last one now is the section that contains this toggle switch and that's a little bit dicey okay but we're going to do it so inside this div i'm going to have a span s p a n and this span will have a class of toggle btn so it's a toggle button like that i'll tap that and open it up and we're going to have icons that you know we're going to import from react icons now um i already know the names of those icons. one is the sun and one is the moon <laughs> so let me just import them first before i use them so i'll come here and say import and uh, let's open that up wah, like this and then i'll paste in import the moon and i'll say import the sun okay from so let's import it from react icons and they have the font awesome icon so dash fa great 
so now i can then use them here so inside this pan let me tap that so the first one we're going to have is the moon like that and let me close it up and this moon is going to have a color property of pink so pink pink moon okay then it's going to have a size uh, property of 16 so one six then I'll just duplicate that down and then I'll change the icon here to Sun s u n and this one is going to have a color property of yellow so the Sun is going to be yellow right yellow Sun okay then size is going to be 16 now below these two icons right I'm going to have a div and that div is going to have a class name of ball so i'll say dot ball and then i'll just tap that it's going to be an empty div basically it's going to be this ball you see here okay great so as far as the markup is concerned we're done with the header section so in the next video we're not we're not going to style let me save it and let's see what we have first so i'll come here and let it compile So this is basically what we have okay so now in the next video we're going to add some styles and make this look a little bit better all right now let's style the header section so um we're going to start from top down but i just feel like this image let me give it a size property so that i mean it's a little bit smaller than this so i'll give it a size of 170 and save that so that the image at least can shrink in size a little bit and it's not even a size property it's a width property so width i was thinking about the react icons where i used to give it a size property so you see now the image is a little bit smaller okay great so now let's style the um, guys from top to bottom so for the container that contains these three sections respectively i'm going to give it a flex between class so flex hyphen between and save and that will just put everything side by side so you see it's already taking shape then uh so we've done the image okay so now for this nav i'm going to give the unordered list so this unordered list here so let's give it a class name of flex between as well so dash dash flex in between and save and that will put this guy side by side okay great now the what's it called this link items here let's add some customized class classes for them so i'll come to my header css and i actually want to start adding the classes from my header so let's come here and say header and what do we want to do in the header well i'm going to set the position to relative first then i'll give it a background so this background is going to be our um, variable color so let me open my css so that you can actually follow along so index css like that so we're going to use this our color scheme here so the initial color scheme the background is color white which is this color here okay so i'll come to my header css and i'll give it a variable color of background so that would give it a light color then of course i'll set the width to 100 percent great now under this header i would like to have a line just a line like that under it so i'll use the um header the pseudo elements property in css so i'll say after like that and i'll open it up let's set the content to empty string first then we'll set the position to absolute okay great now we'll now set the how we want to position it so left is going to be zero then we'll say bottom also set to zero then we'll set the height to one pixel and set the width to escape we'll set the width to 100 percent should it be 100 percent though no 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 it's not going to be 100 percent it's going to be 1000 pixels so 1000 px which is the width of the container 
class so anyway you're going to see the stuff clear out now then we'll set the background color now we'll use our variable color and now we'll use our foreground color so foreground and then we'll save so under this guy you see like a dark line so let me okay so this is the line we're talking about here but if you see very if you look at it very you notice that it's stopping here so what we need to do now is we need to center it so i'll uh, close that up and i would set the transform property transform but before i set the transform this left here i'll change it to 50 percent so it's not going to be zero anymore so 50 percent and then we'll now translate on the x-axis to minus 50 percent now if you save that and you open this up you see now that it's at the center so that looks very similar to what we have here with this line at the center okay great so let's close that up back and now for this link right i have utility classes that i can use to style my links but i don't want to clutter the html i just i'll just add just a, a bunch of class in my css so here i'll just come here and say nav and the links then i'll set the text decoration to text decoration to none then i will set the color so color is going to be set to we're going to use our variable color so initially we want it to be dark okay so we're going to set it to foreground that's going to make it dark so that should um oh okay so it doesn't even need the text decoration property let me remove that and save just needs a color property however the list item so if i say nav and i now target the list item the list item definitely needs um the list style so list style should be set to none okay then we'll set some margin around it so margin is going to be set to zero top and bottom and then left and right is going to be 10 pixels so 10 px save that and that should do the trick for the links except maybe if i want to give it a font size so let's make it a little bit bigger font size is going to be set to 16 pixels save that and oh it doesn't even change it significantly anyway that's fine now the main part of our header css is this toggle uh, switch okay this very one you see here right it requires a lot of thinking to do that you know toggle switch so what i'm going to do is let me target the toggle button so if you look at the header here you see that we have a class of toggle btn that's what we are going to target first so i'll come here and then i would come down and see dot toggle btn btn i'll open that up and i'll set i'll give it a width the width is going to be 45 pig x so we are using absolute numbers here actually then i'll give it a height of 23 pixels okay then let's set a background color to dark so hash 111 then let's set the display this you know what let me save it and even see where we are safe so you see that's what we have there now we are going to set the display to flex okay so 45 23 display flex then let's set the border radius border radius to 50 pixels as well so 50 px okay let's do align items align align items to center okay and let me take that up Control z let me take that up okay then I'm going to do justify content so that's jc and then i'll do justify content space between okay then let's set some padding so padding this padding is going to be set to five pixels then i'll set the position to relative then i'll do a transform so transform i'll then say scale to 1.5 1.5 1 
Then lastly, let's set the cursor to pointer. Great. So that's not, let me save that first, but that's not all we need to do, right? We're now going to target the, this ball class. So where is it? This ball uh, class. We're going to make it like a ball. So that's um, going to be pretty straightforward. So let me just come here and target the ball. So I'll come down and say dot ball. Open that up and I'll set the width. The width, oh sorry, just the width. Width to 20 pixels. But I'm also going to set the height to the same number. Then the height is also going to be 20 pixels okay then let's set the background color to white so let me just do hash fff then i'll set the position to absolute and of course let's do from the top i'll do two pixels from the top from the left two pixels from the left then we'll set the border radius to 50 percent so that's going to make it a circle 50 percent so let me just take that up one two three so that makes sense width height and border radius that makes it a circle then i will set the a transition property let me save it first so that you see what we have so that's what we have so it's blocking the first icon here so this is what the light mode looks like like the sun is bright so that's why the sun is here now we're going to set a transition property so transition and comma not text transition so if this thing is going to change we want it to change smoothly so here i'll just say all and 0.2 seconds and i'll set it to linear so the transition is going to be linear just smooth then i'll now set the um okay so i think that's it for this one um so i'll go ahead and save and uh categorically we can see that we are done with this um header section css so i'll see you in the next section all right now let's build out the hero section so i gotta close this one out to have enough space here and i'll go and get in the hero section which is here open the JS open the CSS and then we'll get to work so in the hero section we're going to have a section so we're going to have a section with a class of hero let's tap that and inside of that section we're going to have a container that will hold everything so here I will say container and let's tap that so the container oh I need to even look at the original project so the container is going to hold these two you know sections here so here i gotta say um the first one is going to contain my text so i'll say dot hero text hero hyphen text and the second one is going to contain my image that's the image there so let me just say dot hero hyphen image so i'll tap that okay so that's how we're going to do our layout so inside of the um hero text what do we have these guys here so first off you see we have a h1 and i'll just grab this h1 you see here copy that and paste it in here then next we have this bit of text which is just a simple paragraph so i'll come down below my uh, guy here and oh sorry ctrl z i'll have a paragraph first and then i'll paste it in then lastly we now have these two buttons but you notice that these two buttons are displaying side by side so you don't just want to drop them uh what's it called on top like that you want to put them in a container like a div that contains the two of them so after the paragraph i'm just going to have a div and then inside that div i will now have two buttons so buttons like so and the first one will say learn more learn more and the next one will say sign up so sign up great so as far as the but uh this text section is concerned we're done so next we need to add styles um markup for the image so i gotta come here and i gotta say um it's an image tag 
so but i don't even have the image yet so i gotta import it from my assets so i'll come up and i'll say import and i'm gonna call the image hero image hero image from where are we importing it so first off we need to get outside of this hero folder and that will take us to and uh, we need to get outside of this one also and that will take us to and then we need to get into the assets folder and then forward slash i think it's just phone.svg i'm not sure let me just okay so it's phone.svg so my visual studio could sometimes just you know slow and all of that anyway um so here i will then reference the uh, i think it's phone image i saved I, I saved it hero image okay so i'll say i'll not reference the hero img i should have actually said phone but anyway i've already said what i said so here let's just say phone yeah so as far as we're concerned we're done with the markup for the two sections now because um i'll in the spirit of breaking things down in the next video i'm going to style it so let me save it and let's take a look at it and see what we have okay so you see what we have we have this section and then this image all right see you in the next one all right so now let's add the um styling for this uh hero section so i'll scroll up and let's start from the container holding the two main components here oh by the way this image is so large that i think i just want to make it a little bit smaller before i you know do anything so inside of the image i'll just give it a width here so width is going to be set to uh what did i use by the way i think i used is it 170 so save that and let's see okay i think i used 170 oh 200 not 170 so one two three 200 and save that and it's a little bit bigger okay great now so let's start styling from the top so I'll come up here. So this container is what holds these two sections, right? So we'll do the container. We'll say uh, utility class dash dash flex between between. So that will give them like equal space in between them. By the way, I don't even want to use any media queries in this project. So I just want to have it basic. Okay. So for the hero text, uh, we're gonna come back to that. We're gonna add some styles in our CSS file. But for the button well we can right away give it a class name of oh class name of um i think dash dash btn um those are the classes that apply then for the first for the second one i'm going to give it btn danger dash dash btn hyphen danger then for this first one I'm going to give it a special class that I will access that I will add with CSS. So I'll just say btn uh, hyphen p. Okay. All right. So I'll save that, and you see these are the buttons. So, but remember the buttons they are side by side. So in the div that holds them, I'll give it a class name. So class name is going to be dash dash flex hyphen sent uh, hyphen between was it between i even used anyway let's then let's save that okay so definitely not between so it has to be flex start so save that and they'll just be side by side um then i think that's about it from styling from this area here so what i will now do is um okay for the image i'm going to give it a class name of dash dash text hyphen center before i save it let me show you what this looks like okay this is what it looks like right now so i'll give it a class name of uh text center and i'll just get rid of this hero image here and save that okay great so it doesn't really change much but we're going to see when we add some custom css styles so i'll go to my hero dot um, css file and first off let's get the main the hero class so i'll say section dot hero which is the uh, container that holds everything let's open that up and we'll give it a background so background color is going to be we're going to use a variable color and it's a light color so initially the background we'll just say background background 
okay i didn't want to type that you know anyway we'll set some padding on the top so padding top and we're going to set it to 12 rem save that and that will push everything down a bit then the hero text so i'll say dot hero uh let's see okay i'll say dot hero text hyphen text and let's set the display to flex i'm actually thinking if there's a need for <laughs> this hero text style anyway if there's a need i'll just come back to it so let me do dot hero text hero hyphen text then i want to target every all the elements inside so the um i'll use my asterisk so what do i want to do i want to add some margin on the bottom and it's just going to be one rem then i'll set the color so although it's already like it has a black color on its own but we want to be able to manipulate that color so we're going to use our special variable color of dash dash foreground like so okay then that button this first button we're going to add some stuff so i'll say dot btn hyphen p i should actually just say just, i should actually have just said just btn but anyway that's what i use so background color or just background really we're going to use a variable color and for now so var we're going to sorry ctrl z we're going to make it to have a um foreground color so foreground then that's dark color then we're going to give it a color so color of the text is going to be background so var that's background great then i think that's about it so let's save this guy and see what we have um, oh so i didn't spell my background properly so let me do that d and save and we should have our white text here which is fine all right so now we are done with this section so in the next one we're just going to build out the footer section but before we um head over to the what's it called the hero um footer section there's something we need to do if i expand this guy you see that this is actually taking too much space so i'm going to uh, rectify that by so first off i'll come to my hero um js and instead of having flex between in this container div i'll change it to grid so i'll say grid and i'll set it to 15 so grid 15 and then i'll save that and now if we expand it you see that it doesn't take up all the too much space anymore so it's 50 percent 50 percent right but i also want to center this piece of text so somewhere in the middle so for that i'll just do um let's see i'll add it in css so i'll come to uh yeah so just above this guy here i would grab this hero text paste that in and i'll set the display to flex and then i'll do flex direction column and then i'll set the justify contents to center so what that will do is that it will place the um, contents in the center here of the page okay so that's basically what i just wanted to do so in the next one we're then going to build out the footer which is very straightforward see you there so now let's build out the footer so i'll close up these two and i'll come to my footer which is here so footer.js and footer.css now for the footer.js we are just going to have our footer text so here first off let's change this div to footer so semantic html right so footer and i'll do that here then for the text inside i'm going to change this to a simple h1 so p sorry p rather and then i'm just going to say copy right and we'll have our copy signed so html entity copy close that and we're going to say 20 22 great so that's our footer text save that um sorry we'll center it okay because this is the only um jsx for the footer we don't need to sp split the video into two so let's add a class name of flex center dash dash flex hyphen center 
okay that's going to center it and forgive me i forgot dash dash center so that will center it and so you see it here but we also have to you know style it a little bit so let me go to my footer css and add some styles so we're just going to say footer here and open that up set the width to 100 percent same for okay then the height height h e i g h t i'll set to 10 percent of the viewport height so 10 vh then i'll set the background so the background color let's use our variable and we're going to do foreground so initially we want the uh, footer to be dark so foreground like so then the color of the text well i think i'll just come here and say footer and i'll grab the paragraph inside to be specific and then i'll get, set the color to let's use a variable color and i'm going to say dash dash background background and then we'll save that and let's see what our footer looks like great so this is what our footer looks like all right so at this point i can say that we're done with you know markup and structuring what the page looks like and it looks pretty decent on both uh desktop and mobile okay so in the next one we're then going to start adding the logic for our project see you there all right welcome back guys now we're going to add the logic for the project so let me start by opening the files that we need so um okay maybe i should start by showing you how we're going to handle the logic so i'm going to open this up and I'm, i did a quick google search of a, a react library called use local storage so if you come to um the github repository sorry the npm um website where you see this use local storage right you're going to see what it does so basically we want to be able to set the theme either light or dark theme and save it in local storage okay so there is a react package that handles that you know saving stuff in the local storage and that's what we're going to use it's called use local storage and it's actually like react hooks okay so it has the same syntax as use state hook for example so it's going to you know feel very much like what we've already been doing all right so you can also check out their git uh, github repository this is their link here and you can read the documentation of how it works it's actually very pretty basic and straightforward okay but i'm going to show you how it works right in this video so the first thing we need to do is to install it so let me show you how you're going to install it in fact i'm going to install it here so you just need to install npm i use local storage so i'm just going to copy this uh guy here all right click and copy and then i'll close that now in this project i'm going to open a new terminal so i'll do plus here and then this is a new terminal where i can install with which i can install uh, the new the use local storage uh, package so i'm just going to paste that in so npm i which stands for install use local storage and i'll hit enter and it will just download the package from the internet so i'm just gonna you know give this like a couple of seconds or maybe like a minute for it to download and then i'll come back all right so it has finished um installing so let's go ahead and import it so we need to import it into our page before we can use it so how am i going to do that well it's also in the documentation so let me just show you so you don't think so you're just going to import use local storage from use local storage right so i'll just come here and paste that in so that's how you import it and then you go ahead and create your so i'm going to go to my page my react page i'm working on so that you can see everything we're doing so first off just like we create the state we're going to create use local storage so i'm going to say const and let's open up square brackets and then i want to set this state like whatever as theme and then i'll then add a comma here and then i'll say set theme okay then i'll set it to be equal to now the only difference is that instead of saying use states we're going to say use local storage okay then we're going to set the initial value so initially it needs to take a key and a value okay 
If you're saving stuff in the local storage, the way it's saved is in key value pairs. Uh, it's something you should already know if you learn basic JavaScript, but let me show you what I mean. So I'm going to come here to this already done project and I'll inspect it so that you can see the local storage. Okay, so we're in local storage, I'll go to applications and we have local storage somewhere here. Okay, great. So that's where I am currently. So you see, this is the key and this is the value. So in our case here, the key is theme and the value is light. So you see, we're currently in light mode. If I change this now, watch what's going to happen. So the theme has been changed to dark. The value has been changed to dark and that's why the page is currently in dark mode. Let's change it back to light and you see it has changed back to light. So that's how this stuff works, right? Key value pairs. So in, in what's it called? This is our theme and set theme. We're going to set the name, the key that we want to save it as has theme and initially we're going to set the value to light now this initial value actually represents the current state of our application in terms of the color scheme so if you remember correctly when we wrote our css when we modified our index css file so let me show you so we modified the index css file we set the colors we read like these colors and then we set this dark theme to be equal to dark okay so this is the second color scheme that we're going to use so this first one here is the initial color scheme and that's what we've set here to light okay so it's, the program is going to assume that this first color scheme is the initial color scheme which is light and then subsequently if we change that to dark this is the color scheme that will be used so you need to specifically set it as data theme and set it to dark and then set your color which is fine great now um good now let's write a function that will change the theme so maybe on something like this button click we, we want to call a function that will change the theme so i'll create an arrow function like this and i'll call that function toggle theme and what do i want this function to do okay so let's open it so basically i want this function to change the theme from light to dark or from dark to light so here i'll say theme i'll say if the theme this is a ternary operator so i'll say if the theme is equal to light then i want you to change it to dark and by changing it to dark we're going to adopt this color scheme okay this dark color scheme where we just flipped everything great so let's add the else part so else i want you to change it to light so this is a toggle function now we need to just put this in a variable so here i'll just say const and i'll just set it put it in a variable i'll say new theme and then i'll just yeah so this new theme now is is this uh statement here has been saved inside this variable so i'll then come down here like this and then I'll say set theme. So I'll use this setter function here. I'll say set theme to new theme. As simple as that. So this simple function here is going to change our theme. It's going to toggle our theme every time we call it. Now, there's one thing though. This use local storage uh package makes it a lot easier for us to store stuff in local storage like i'm thinking of all the code i need to write to be able to interact with local storage um you need to parse uh, you need to use json.parse json.stringify and stuff like that but this does everything for us under the scene under the hood okay so now what are we going to do we're going to attach this function to this button okay i remember it's in the header uh section then also we're going to set this theme on this header as well so it's inevitable we need to actually call the we need to actually create um open the header.js file right now so i'll go to my file here and i'll open my headers uh, js like this and let's close this great so we're going to create um two props so i'll come here and the first prop will be to i'll just call this prop so i'll call the first prop my theme 
and let me correct that so this should be my theme and i'll call the second one on toggle theme so on toggle theme and i'm going to tie this on toggle theme to the toggle theme function we created here great now let's come here and let's tie it correctly so on toggle theme but well, let's look for the um this span here or this div here that is connected to the guy we have here okay so on the div i'll come here and say on click and i'll now reference the on toggle theme like so okay great then as for the theme i will set this header here i'll give it a data property so i'll say data hyphen theme and this is also coming from the documentation of the use local storage plugin so data theme and i'll set it to my theme prop great now that we've um added the two prop let's go ahead save and let's come back to our app js okay so we're going to catch those props in the header section here so first off i'll catch the my theme and i'll set that to be equal to this theme uh let's just say state here for just you know simplicity so i'll say theme and then i'll catch the on toggle prop I'll set it to this function that toggles the theme. So I'll copy that and just paste that in here. Escape. Oh, sorry, I made it. So copy and paste that in here. Great. So essentially, what's going to happen is that um, when you click on this button, it will trigger this function. Okay. Now, let me save that first and click on the button and see if anything changes. So I'll click on the button. Oh, I, okay i'll click on the button and you can see that the top bar changes okay and i think something is wrong with the uh the way i imputed the styles for the links but i'll come back to that anyway if you click on it again then it should change to light and if you click on it, it changes to dark and light but that's not all we need to do first off let me just correct these uh links here and make sure that i you know handle that so this actually took me like a few minutes and i discovered that in my index css i did absolute rubbish when it comes to the foreground color <laughs> so initially it set to color white and i made it color light <laughs> oh my god <laughs> so i'm going to change it to color white and <laughs> i'm sorry i'm sorry about this really uh, i'll save that and that should rectify what we have here so you see the link is now um white <laughs> come on Zeno. So I'm going to close this stuff and I'll just like, I can't even remember where I was in the tutorial, right? Anyway, because we spent 13 minutes here, you see here that we've been able to set this function to toggle the header section and, you know, it changes from dark mode to light mode. So what we just need to do is to add a few, uh, to replicate the same in the other components and then we'll be done with the project. So we're going to do that in the next video. All right, welcome back guys now let's replicate the same thing we did for the header section which is creating this my theme prop we're going to replicate it and we're going to put it in the other two sections so i'll open this stuff here and i'll just open up the hero section js and the footer section css so i'll open that up and let's close this so basically what we want to do is let's go to header js and grab this my theme like this i'll copy that and i'll replicate that in the um, section here so i'll paste that in and then i'll do the same for the footer section uh which is this top um, tag here and i'll paste that in then next we're going to have this prop this my theme prop so you know what let me just do it such that i can just copy it so i'll just add this guy here and grab it like this i'll copy that and then i'll just remove this guy back great so save this page come here and paste in the prop Control v and then here i would also paste in the prop Control v so by doing this we have you know done the initial setup for these two components 
now what we need to do is to go into the app js and we need to catch the prop so basically we just need to give them this uh, my theme here and then catch the theme prop so i'll save that now if we go ahead and save this file watch what happens when we click on this guy the dark mode will be set on the whole page or at least the whole components on the page so i'll do that and you see now we have dark mode set everywhere and you know this footer initially was set to dark so that's why it's like light now so it just switched things up watch the button also this button so i'll click here and you see the button changes so basically this orange button is not changing because we did not you know change the variation in the um dark mode dark theme scheme in our css so it's not everything you want to change it's only between dark and light so we'll do that and everything works fine now there's a problem though if i open this stuff now we're currently in dark mode but this button here is showing light so let me change it back to light right what we want is that we want it such that when we click on this button it will move to this sun and cover the sun and show the moon that's what we want to happen ideally so that's what we are going to do in the next um in the next video see you there all right welcome back guys now let's handle the functionality that will um, adequately position this ball depending on the color scheme so uh, the ball is located in our header js so what we're going to do is we're going to add another prop here and i'll call that prop on switch on switch prop okay because this button is like the switch that turns on the dark or light mode great now for this ball this div with the class name of ball i'm not just going to make it ball i'm going to make it dynamic okay so i'll come here and delete what we have here and open my curly braces so here i'll use a ternary operator i will say that if so we'll say on switch so if not on switch don't worry this is all going to make sense very shortly so in other words the opposite of on switch then i want it to have just the class name of ball or maybe i should actually just do it the normal way so i'll delete this i'll say if on switch is equal to true is equal to true then i want it to have the class name of ball and but because we've clicked on switch so in other words we want it to have something that will move this ball at least to this point here so i'm going to have um what's it called i'm going to have another class name of move m-o-v-e okay else sorry else I want it to have just the regular class name of ball okay i hope you're getting what's going on here now this move class that we've created here that we you know called we added here we've not created it so what i'm going to do is i'll copy this class here so let me copy the class and then in my header css so let me come to header css i will now close this i will now add that class here of move so i'll say dot move to move the ball and basically i'm just going to set a transform property so i'll say transform and i'll say translate on the x-axis so basically i want to move something translate on the x-axis i'm just going to do 22 pixels px 22 px okay and that's something i actually you know practiced and changed tweaked until i got what i wanted okay so now i'm going to go ahead and save and let me come back here to my header js and even if i save this it's not going to take effect now why is it not going to take effect because this is a this is a, a a prop okay so i have to catch this prop in the header components okay so now we've created the prop we've set what we want to happen if the prop is true so now let's go to the header component and catch that prop so i'll go to header js and in this header js i'm going to create a variable or let me see how am i going to do this that it will be step by step um oh sorry i'll go to app js because that's where the header um this thing is okay so i'll create a state so let's come down here and create a state so i'll say use state and 
oh okay i've not imported the state yet anyway let me just type it in then let me import use state from react first so oh it has already auto imported i need to take this up and I, I want it to be the first thing on the page so import use state from react and here i'll create a state and i'll just use my state snippet and i'll call this state switch okay and our the setter function is going to be capitalized as well so set switch and initially we're going to set it to uh what did i set it to initially let me just see we're going to set it to false so it's a boolean false so initially when the page loads this is going to be something is wrong here oh i set this inside come on i set it inside the new theme uh let me just move it down okay yeah so everything let me cut this and put it on top okay yeah this is where i'm supposed to put it on top here and every okay i really don't know what's going on here i don't know why i'm having an error here let me close that and I imported use state from React and I created this. Is this not how they create state again? <laughs> Let me delete it and see if the error still shows up. So there's no error. So maybe I should just bring it up here. So let's say use state. Use state. And everything seems fine here. Then I'll call that state switch. Oh, I can't use this the switch word because it's a reserved word in JavaScript. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> so let me undo that. And I'm gonna call it switch button. So switch S W I T C H and B T N. Okay. Alright, so I'm sorry about that. I absolutely forgot that switch. You know there's a switch statement. It's a reserved word in JavaScript. So I'm gonna set it to false initially. And I, I think I'll bring it down. So switch button set to false. So here we'll now catch the um, on switch prop. So I'll say on switch, and I'll set it to switch button. So S W I T C H and B T N. Okay, great. So basically, if you now translate what's going on here to what we did in the header js you see here that what this simply means is that look if switch button where is it so if switch button is set to true in other words if you've clicked on it then have ball and move on this uh div else just have the ball class so if i go ahead and save i think it's time for us to test it out so i'll come here i'll click on it and let's see what happens okay nothing happens so let me be sure that everything is in place so dot move transform translate x and yes this is correct then let's come to the header so if on switch okay there's one more thing we need to do so when we click on this button right we are triggering this function this toggle theme function so whenever we toggle the theme what we want is we want to update this set switch button so i'll then say set switch button to the opposite of you know what it is so um exclamation mark switch button switch btn like that so this is what i needed to do to like finalize everything so I'll go ahead and save and it should work just fine. So here I'll click on it and you see that it will move towards this side. Great. So it works. Now I'll click on it, it will move back. I'll click on it, it moves. I'll click on it, it moves back. Now it looks like everything is working perfect, but there is a problem. So if I click on it now and it's moved here, right? When I refresh the page, if for example the user logs out or closes the browser and comes back to your website, watch what happens. So I'll refresh the page. Now, although we are in dark mode, you see here that it's currently showing the light or the sun, which is light mode. So what we want to do is we want to add a use effect such that when the user loads the page initially, it will check the current theme 
right and position this button based on the current theme so that's what we're going to do so here i'm going to add use effect i'll add a comma here and say use effect and i'll come I, I really hope you appreciate the fact that we are building this project by looking at a problem and solving the problem because that's how i wanted to you know structure the content here so here i'll say use effect and let's open that up using arrow function so what do we want to achieve with this use effect well we've already said it we want to check the theme and based on that theme we want to set the switch button so here i will say i'll, I'll add an if statement i'll say if and i'll say theme which is this variable we set here that is saved to local storage so i'll say if theme is equal to dark d a r k then what do i want to do well i want to set this switch button control c and let's paste that here to true so you know it's a it's a boolean and it's initially set to false so when it's in light mode right it's set to false now we are saying that if theme is equal to dark if we're in dark mode then set it to true when the page loads okay now i'll save that and you see it automatically moved to true when the page re-rendered so let me re refresh the page again and let's see it moves to true if you take it back to and everything works perfectly now let's refresh and everything is fine so back to dark mode it works but of course because we've referenced this variable here we're going to get an error in our console so we need to just add it as a dependency so I'll add a comma here and create a dependency array and then see theme so that's theme and then let's go ahead and save and i think at this point we can see that we now know how to implement light and dark mode toggle in any website okay so there's a possibility that we can upgrade our knowledge in subsequent videos right on how to implement this right i'm still thinking about you know finding maybe doing a video to upgrade how we implement dark and light mode but i hope you enjoyed this lecture and i'll see you in the next one all right that's it guys now if you enjoyed this video then make sure to leave a like on the video and if you're not subscribed make sure to subscribe to the channel you can also check out my website for front-end development courses all things react and javascript thank you so much and i'll see you in the next one